So, Happy New Year! And as we say in Japan, Shinnen Akemashite Omedetou Gozaimasu. Which is similar to in China, where they say Shinnen Kwailu. Or if you are in the European Union, you might say. <laughs> So, you may be wondering, in Japan, what are the traditions for New Year's Eve? Well, uh, a lot of people eat soba. That's the, the traditional food to eat. And since I do not like soba, I ate udon. But also, because I'm an American, I kind of wanted to eat some pizza, so I bought some pizza at, at the bakery. And uh, another thing is that uh, Japanese people often eat... Um, a type of fish called it's a, a Japanese amberjack, um, which is a species of yellowtail. Um, I had to look this up because I never knew what it was called in English, but uh, in Japanese it's called booty. And every year I like to say booty 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 booty. booty, booty. <laughs> So, Happy New Year, everyone. Um, as I am recording right now, it is December 31st in the afternoon, and it is snowing outside. And, uh, actually, no, I think it stopped snowing. It's got a bunch of snow on the ground, but it actually finally stopped snowing. Um, staying with the in-laws. And I've kind of set up a temporary hobby room because I'm on vacation and there's not much to do. So we're just kind of taking it easy, watching lots of movies and um, enjoying some hobby time. My wife is building a, a, a tiger stuffed animal. So, um, as I promised, I was going to split up December into two different uh, videos. So first I want to show you I got Model Graphics Magazine. This is, I uh, just saw it yesterday, I bought it. This is actually February 2018. It's December 2017, but that's just the way they do. I don't, I don't understand why they always have to put the, the date way in advance. But anyhow, let me, uh, let me show you the stuff here. Alright, so. Girls and Panzers on the front. I don't care about that. Check out the back though, this is really cool. Okay, so Hasegawa usually has uh, an ad on the back. So this uh, Heinko is pretty cool looking, I guess. This is 148 scale. It's got to be a big model. Pretty pricey too, 7,000 yen, as you could expect. This is really cool. They have a new uh, F15J. So it's a Japanese F15. That's really cool. A really beautiful looking deco on the back. Uh, on the back aileron there. And check this out. So, another of the Eggplane Girls. Um, this one is uh, Rei Hazumi. And she is on uh, a 124 scale Carl Morser. <laughs> so, it has like a little cute little flag and such. So, um, you know, I have, well, they had the, the first one, which was Amy McDowell, and I forget what she was, what car she had, and then I, I the one I have is Claire Frost with that, um, uh, shoot, the, you know, the, the, the Jeep-looking thing, I forget what it's called, and, uh, this one's a Carl Morser, so this one comes with a limited edition, um, uh, resin figure, so that's really neat. I'm going to show you the neat stuff I, I found in this magazine. Okay. So, let me skip ahead here to something I saw here. This is interesting. This has a Pacific Rim. I know Plamax is doing some Pacific Rim stuff, but... Now Bandai is getting into it. 
And then this has like a special LED to put in the chest. Where's that Andromeda um, carrier from Yamato? And they got the 2202 Yamato. And this is. Um, yeah, this is going to be uh, small, I guess. This is like uh, the Mecha Collection 2202. I think I'll pass, though. I don't know. Um, Gundam stuff, blah, blah, blah. Alright, check this out. So, they're coming out with another Macross Fortress here. This one comes with little Destroids. And uh, so do the, the Daedalus attack. So this is not quite a reissue of the TV series Macross, but it comes with the, the, the Destroids in there as well. So here is the Carl Morser I just showed you. So this is coming out in February, and it's going to be 4,500 yen. And uh, speaking of Carl Morser's, <laughs> Battlestar Galactica. I actually started working on this a little bit today. I was talking with uh, Steve at SMKR, and um, we're going to do the, the, the buddy build on that kit. Uh, he needs to find his, though. He hasn't found it yet. And as I was predicting... Finally, they're getting around to it. This is Greg Gates' A-10 Thunderbolt 2 from Area 88. And that is being announced for... Um, uh, March, March 2nd. And the J-35 Draken, that is out... Um, actually, it's already out, it says here. So let me move on to the next thing I want to show you. Girls! No, that's, that's not it. Let me show you here. Where is it? Okay, by Aoshima. I've been looking forward to this for quite a long time. This is the VFG. So it's kind of like a frame arms girl kind of a thing, but this is a, a Valkyrie fighter girl or... or a, whatever VFG so this is Macross plus I'm sorry Macross Delta so here's the the kit here it is in fighter mode and she's sitting on top of it it's non scale I guess it's probably close to like a 190th scale or something like that but she rides it in Gerwalk and it becomes like an armor for the 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 batch ride mode so that's pretty cool it comes with the uh, parts you can yank apart and like the the legs open up here as you can see, so that's really that's really cool. And what else struck my fancy in this here? Oh yeah, so one inch Star Wars standing Star Wars figures that will be sold separately. And so this is a uh, 172 scale, so you can, this will you know go along with your uh, perfect grade 172 scale. Millennium Falcon, <clears throat> and look at that, it comes with everybody there, that's neat, really neat, and then here's Premium Falcon, there's this from the stupid movie I'm not going to watch, and what else, oh this is really cool, Wireless LEDs. Look how tiny they are. They come in different colors here. So I haven't spent the time to try to read and translate how this all works, but it uses like some sort of like a coil as a power for some reason. And look how tiny they are. That is really cool. So yeah, Jerry, <laughs> if you're if you're watching this. Uh, you might want to look into this. This is kind of interesting. I've never seen this before until recently. And so this is, uh, they, they put the, these, um, these little tiny LEDs into the, this is a 132nd uh, Aoshima Snap Fit uh, Suzuki Hustler. And uh, if you watch the uh, Hobby Like Japan's uh, Gunpla TV, they've, they've featured this. 
And lastly, this is really cool. So like in the background, this is F-16 fighting Falcon. And this is the F-2, Mitsubishi F-2. This is the, the Japanese version of the F-16. And in the foreground, this is the F-CK-1 Ching Kuo. This is the Taiwanese fighter. And this is interesting though. This is a 148 scale by AFV Club. Now, I'm not familiar with AFV Club, but I know there was a great wall hobbies uh, kit of the same fighter. But this is by AFV Club. I'm not. I, I guess it's a different company than Great Wall. I guess I don't know. But I saw that at the at the Tokyo Hobby Show. So, all right, yeah. So there you go. All right, so I'm going to show you the neat stuff that I've picked up in this month of December. I picked this up at my local hobby store. This is Star Wars Plastic Model Box Art Card Pack. And I've opened this up. And it's like these uh, postcard-sized uh, box art thingies here. So, this is the TIE Fighter. The TIE Advanced. And the TIE Interceptor. That's really cool. On the back shows you the model it talks about the the details and such and some comments and so like it says you know this is on the uh, featured in Star Wars Return of the Jedi um, Battle of Endor blah 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 so it just talks about the, the actual uh, unit here um, this one here Just talks about the, the panels on either side. Star Wars, um, the A New Hope is one, of, of course, as we know, and it was you know flying in formation with uh, Darth Vader's Tie Advanced in the in the trench here, and, um, and this one also talks about. See, this they're really proud of this, and that is really cool. But for someone like me, I'm just gonna have to paint that over that anyways. But you know, I did that with the. Uh, the old uh, MPC interceptor. So yeah, there we go. Pretty neat stuff. This will add some the uh, lovely clutter in my my hobby room. I don't know where I'm gonna find this. I'm just gonna just stick it somewhere and rediscover it in a few years. All right. Um, I got this. Yeah, at uh, Shimamura. Let me point this up here. Shimamura is a clothing. And they have lots of, you know, it's a clothing store. They have lots of really neat crap there. And, you know, I like you see my uh, um, my uh, my Sega Dreamcast uh, jumper that I wear in my videos sometimes. You might have seen that. Um, or just like, you know, my uh, other, like my Sega Saturn t-shirt and stuff. So I've got that at Shimamura. So they have some really neat crap there. They have like Neo Geo uh, sweatshirts, and I didn't get that one. But this is a Frame Arms Girl sweat jumper let me pull back here so it's a hooded sweatshirt on the back it says frame arms girl style it's got that symbol I don't know I, I you know I've never even, even bought a frame arms girl model before um, these are made by Kotobukiya they're they're really cute. I, I don't I don't get why these uh, cute girls are, you know, wearing these uh, guns and armor and stuff. I don't know what the uh, uh, what the story behind that is, but um, it says here it's got the upper and lower. So I can use this as a bookmark if I'd like. Check this out. Well, <laughs> this is cool. So it actually comes with, it says here, Frame Arms Girls Water Slide Decals. Let me get close here. So you got several different kinds of eyes. And look, it says Shimamura. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh my gosh. And then I don't know what this stuff is about. I don't know what 
you know, whatever. But that's cool. That's really cool. And uh, so, as I just mentioned, it has the the bottoms here. So this is what it says here: Frame Arms Grill Style T 506, whatever that's about. And um, it's got like this uh, nice uh, stripe on the on the leg here. That's pretty cool. And here's the back pocket, frame arms curl. So, obviously, while this isn't a plastic model, it is related. So, um, yeah, Kotobukiya. And this is really cool. Shimamura exclusive water slide decals. <laughs> That's cool. These will be my new pajamas. My new, my uh, my winter pajamas. Yay. So my work had a year-end party. And that was uh, like the week before Christmas or so. And they had this uh, raffle. And I picked a number. And there was a box that I thought, you know, whatever. I didn't really think much about the shape too much, but I liked the wrapping paper. And last year I got some neat, uh, it was like a couple boxes of, of like uh, uh, the instant coffee sticks. that you just kind of toss it into hot water and there you go. And I was kind of hoping I might find something like that this time around. So there's this box that was just kind of a, just a nice shape. And I like the wrapping paper, so I chose it. And I open it up, and I'm like, no, no. So this is what I got. <laughs> it's, sorry, oh, bad reflection there. All right, this is uh, MS-14S Gelgoog. This is a Gundam model. <laughs> it's just so funny that... Uh, it was a total coincidence that out of all of the models that me, Mr. Plastic Model Guy, ended up getting this. And um, that is just too cool of a coincidence. So this is uh, HG uh, number 70. So this is a, kind of an older kit. And yeah, there you go. <laughs> that That was just too funny. Very, very funny. So, moving on. This finally came. I pre-ordered this way back in September or so, and it's finally been released. This is the the German E75 Aus... 128mm flak cannon by Rocket Models. And I mentioned before, this is my friend who I, I worked with when I was at Aoshima, and uh, he started his own company. So we got this this marching, uh, you know, walking uh, German art artillery cannon, and the cool thing is that now that he's had these these, um, uh, I think there was like four different ones to choose from. Um, they're moving on to some Soviet armor, walking armor, and and uh, one has got uh, I think it's like uh, six legs or so. It's going to be a huge uh, walking tank. So this finally was released really cool. I think I'm going to do an independent um, unboxing for this sometime very soon. Very, very neat. So, yeah, this is uh, in cooperation with Model Collect. So here there's a correction to the instructions here. So, full color here. At least on the on the cover here. And nice booklet for the instructions. Very nice. And here you go. See, so check this out. Full color painting instructions. The paint callouts are in Mr. Color and Mr. Hobby. Neat stuff, man. Very, very neat stuff. So, yeah, I need to send him an email and congratulate him. Let him know I got my model kit. All right. So I've been on this uh, this real Russian flanker kick lately. This is the Sukhoi Su-34 Strike Flanker Fullback. Now this is really unique because the two pilots sit next to each other. You know they're not um, you know one behind the other guy. They they actually sit next to each other. So it's kind of it's got a, a, a wide um, cockpit. And this has that uh, very unique uh, duck bill, kind of like a you know duck's head kind of a shape to 
to it. There's nothing really to see on the sides here. Um, I've already taken some of the parts off to do a dry fit. I could find one 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 build up of this on YouTube and actually the guy didn't even get around to painting it. But um let me get the locator pegs here and do like a like a dry fit here. So very nice. Um, the cockpit detail is kind of me, yeah, so so I guess this is an older kit. Uh, a friend of mine told me about um, uh, there's a place in the uh, Czech Republic that does a resin um, replacement cockpit. So I, I think I might invest in that. That would be pretty cool. I need to contact that company and see how much they want for it. But here is the wing. So the guy on the YouTube channel who uh, did this, uh, I don't know who he was, I forget. I went ahead and subscribed to him, but um, he had like a whole bunch of putty in here. And I think what you need to do is instead of just having it set like that, you kind of have to push it together and try to get the, the, the glue to dry that way, maybe. Or maybe he could, yeah, maybe he tried that and he couldn't get it to, to sit right, I don't know. But, um, I'll, uh try my luck with this kit when the time comes. The only thing is is that the, the decals are kind of crappy. Not too happy about these. I got this off of Yaj, uh, Yahoo Auctions Japan, and the decals are a little bit a little bit filthy. Then I found out later that the Tamiya uh, SU-34 is basically just a, a reboxing of the, the Itoleri kit. <laughs> so yeah, go figure. Go figure. And I, I probably could have gotten it for a lot cheaper, too. Oh, well. Uh, I learned, actually, that that was the same kit from those uh, those Russian flanker um, uh, magazines that I had got. And I showed some of those in the, uh, the, the previous update. So, Leda, the Fantastic Adventure of Yoko. Oh my gosh. This is a Tsukuda Hobby kit. And it is resin. And let's just uh, take a look inside here. Let me angle this downwards. I've already taken some of the parts off. You know, I, these are kind of loose, so I can just pull the, the legs out here. So this is, apparently it's, it's resin. Tsukuda kind of moved on to doing um, uh, soft vinyl kits in the 90s, but in the 80s they did a whole bunch of these uh, these resin kits. And actually on the, on the side here you can see like they have a loop on the third. This is from an anime called Cat's Eye. This is Urdase Yatsura. So this is the, the figure here, Benton. I had this figure. I wanted up just... I, I sold it. I, it wasn't really much of a keeper. And then this is from uh, Elgheim, these characters. So this is the actual kit here. She's holding her sword. So, yay. So yeah, here we go. These parts seem to fit fairly nicely. And nicely detailed Head. There's a little bit of an injury here. I'll have to smooth that down. Kind of got gouged there somehow. I don't know what's up with that. But yeah, I'll clip off the locator pegs and such. It's got a sword and her arms and her, uh, her, her ponytail. She has like a ponytail that kind of pops out one side here. So that is super neat. Super, super neat. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, I ended up paying too much for this. I think I paid about 6,000 yen. Um, fortunately, the other bidder, uh, he kind of gave up. You know, like I had bid it up to about like 4,000 yen or so in the beginning. And then he outbid me. And then with an hour left or so, I went ahead and bid it up to like 6,000. 
thousand yen or so, and it ended at like fifty eight hundred or something like that. So, yay! It's mine now, yay! So, lastly, I'm going to show you this. This is really cool. My wife got this for me for Christmas. And when I say she got it for me, what I mean is uh, she just asked me what I wanted and I told her what it was. And then so she just uh, paid for it. And then I got it and then um, gave it to her. And then on Christmas Eve, she gave this book to me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, gee, thanks. Oh, my gosh. So this book here, let me uh, point this back up here. This is a collection of a whole bunch of Macross models. Really cool. Now this is made by Model Graphics. And it's a whole bunch of articles. This book contains builds of um, the various Macross series. So it's got Macross F, Macross Delta, um, Macross Plus, Macross Zero, um, and then the original Macross. Okay, sorry, my uh, daughter interrupted me just now. <laughs> Look at this ridiculous costume. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be uncomfortable. <laughs> That's the one thing about uh, Japanese animation. Uh, these guys, obviously, they've never really touched a woman's, a real woman's body. They just kind of have a theory of how women work. Bizarre as hell. Anyhow, this is really cool looking. Oh my gosh. I don't know what that's about. I've never seen Macross F. I've only seen like the first episode or so. There's the YF-29, what I think is from um, Macross Plus. So there's nothing by Macross 7 on here. I know that uh, Bandai had some Macross 7 kits. I think they were 1-100 scale. Um, I don't like that stupid show. Um, plus those uh, model kits only came with stickers. From what I understand, is the beautiful Draken 3. Golly, I want to... I want to get this kit someday. So, very, very super neat. Here we go. The different ones here. So, this has, this magazine has builds of uh, models by Hasegawa, Bandai, and Wave. It's got some of the older stuff here, and like, what is this? I think this is uh, somebody did uh, their own scratch-built armored Valkyrie. Yeah, it's Hasegawa. It's got the 178 skill, or the 142, well, 148 skill as well as 172. Hasegawa stuff. Here's the Macross factory. This is a Emai repop. Came out a few years ago. And what's this? Yeah, this is the Wave 1 100 scale Macross uh, Valkyrie. Super neat, man. Yeah, here's the 148 scale Valkyrie. My friend recently got this kit. Very, very nice. So, yeah, extremely neat stuff. It's got some Destroids back here, too. It's got the Wave 172 scale Destroids. Like, here's the, the Phalanx. Here's 
And there's the, check it out, there's the, the, the Daikon 3. And this actually showed up in, just very briefly in one episode. See, it's got the girl on the front. <laughs> Goofy. This is the Wave 172 Defender. Very nice. And the Tomahawk. Very beautiful. And look, this is the Phalanx. This is the old 1 100. Uh, Emai repop that I built a few years ago. Really uh, fabulous paint scheme that they did. Very neat looking. Very cool. Here's the female power armor. This is a Emai repop. Here's the old Emai uh, destroyed Spartan here. This is really cool. This is a 172 scale repop. So, and here's the monster. I recently picked up this kit this year. So, yeah, very neat stuff. So, there is another Macross modeling book. There it is. This book was made... Who, who put this out? Was this model graphics? Let me see. So this is the VF modeling manual. This is only for Hasegawa Valkyries. But I've had this book for a couple of years now. It's got all sorts of different cool stuff here. It has some scratch built stuff as well. This is how to do a Valkyrie. Um, this is a, like a real minor nitpick that I never really thought of before, but apparently the legs, they people say that uh, it's not totally straight enough. So this shows you how to modify it so it's perfectly straight. But, you know, whatever. I, I probably wouldn't care about that. And in back... It has like a list of all of the Hasegawa kits that had been released up to a certain date. Very cool. So yeah, I've had this for a while. So this is my second Macross modeling book I've gotten. Neat. Oh, I forgot to mention, uh, this came with my... Uh, uh, the, the the walking Nazi thingy. This is from Hobby Link Japan. It says, Happy Holidays from Hobby Link Japan 2017. Isn't that nice? Yeah, that's like, uh, I don't know if that's supposed to be Santa or Scott Hards or both together, I guess. I don't know, but anyhow, that is super cute. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's cute. <laughs> I was hoping I wouldn't have anything in this category for this month. Uh, I think last month I didn't have anything. I was kind of happy to uh, not really report on that. But uh, this month is a bit different. Uh, I had uploaded that video on listing the reasons why I am not going to watch The Last Jedi. And the main reason is because it essentially promotes book burning and this this whole cultural Marxism behind that, and uh, uh, user Max Brandt had um, uh, expressed his opinion on that, and this guy here, <laughs> so his 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 uh, YouTube channel or his YouTube uh, username is Attack on Titan is actual feces, and I I've never seen. The anime, I've I've read maybe the first volume of the Attack on Titan manga, and I thought it was interesting. It um, sure is a lot more interesting than Love Live, that's for sure. Whether or not it's a crap animation, I, I, I kind of don't think it is, but, you know, whatever, people are entitled to their opinions. 
So anyhow, this guy uh, went on about how um, accusing those he disagreed with of maybe supporting the South in the Civil War. And I had said, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, the North had committed some war crimes and they're guilty of some atrocities too. It's not like one side was all 100% righteous and the other side was 100% evil. Um, although, of course, I, I do side with the North because, you know, for obvious reasons. Anyhow, this guy started bickering, and so he started accusing me of supporting genocide. I don't know how that worked out. No idea. He says, oh, I never brought up cultural Marxism. Well, I kind of don't believe he even understands what cultural Marxism is, because according to his posts, um, the guy is... Uh, whether he knows what it is or not, he's, he's pretty much supporting it. And so he started accusing me of being a genocide lover. And at that point, I just, I just had to block him. It's, you know, I, I have tried to be kind of fair with people. A lot of times, I will just flat out just uh, block people right away. Um, as, as soon as they start causing problems. And I vaguely remember this guy's name from before. And I remember being tempted to block him, and I can't remember what it was about. But uh, this time, just, you know, I, I nixed him. I, I, I just have no, uh, no patience for people like this. So, especially when he starts accusing me of, of genocide. Well, so, it kind of puts me into the, the position of having to defend the South, because... The, the Confederate States of America, they were not guilty of genocide, they were guilty of slavery. If you want to talk about genocide, how about those who support cultural Marxism and their love for abortion and Planned Parenthood, which was born from the KKK by a woman named Margaret Sanger, who Hillary Clinton has said is one of her, her biggest role models, and this woman, Margaret Sanger, was a Nazi sympathizer and wrote about her support of Hitler. So, who do you think is in the wrong here? And the other thing, the one last thing I'll, I'll mention about this guy's idiot post, and he, he posted a bunch, so if you want to look at it, you know, whatever, I, I wouldn't recommend replying to him, especially because the idiot can't even respond back. But he says, listen, buddy, if you can't grasp how race leads to inequality, then that's your own mental deficiency. Okay, race does not lead to inequality. Racism leads to inequality, okay? And if you're going to talk about genocide, especially of blacks in America then you had better start opposing Planned Parenthood because they are responsible for uh, basically um, just murdering uh, black children every day, every hour. Planned Parenthood is evil, and they are the ones who are committing black genocide. All right, so um, let's move on to something nice. Okay, so, uh, people uh, have offered criticism in the past, and, you know, sometimes people don't know how to offer constructive criticism. Uh, other people do. So, this uh, Judy, I, I assume it's a woman, she says, uh, I, I really enjoy your videos, but the background noise on the radio does not add anything. And this was on the Ravel Cylon Raider build. And I, I watched that video and I saw that um, I had, uh, I was listening to the Place Boing's goofy music videos in the background. So my response was, you know, I don't make a big production out of my videos. Uh, I, I might insert some goofy stuff once in a while, but I, what you see is what you get, and uh, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, do a whole bunch of voiceovers and, you know, knock myself out over that. What I do is I enjoy the hobby as I want to enjoy the hobby, 
and I will record it while I'm doing it so people can see what I'm doing. So after I explained that, she was really nice, and uh, she said that uh, she really appreciates my uh, um, calm and real way I do my videos. So, okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, yeah, I, I try not to be pretentious at all. Okay, so this is something else that I thought was pretty neat. So, I did a search. Now, I am not on Reddit, but there was a th thread on Reddit about what are your favorite model kit YouTube channels. And, um, of course, Andy's Hobby Headquarters was mentioned. And, again, he's, he's a really cool guy. I, I got to talk to him a lot. And uh, especially because I, I lived um, in North Phoenix, kind of close to uh, where his, his shop was. And uh, so, yeah, he's, he's a neat guy. I like his, his channel. He's, he has a nice shop in, unless he's moved, it was in North Glendale. So anyhow, um, Dr. Faust was mentioned. That's great. And then somebody named Low718 says, I enjoy stevefish.net. And uh, he says Steve. He calls me Steve, but whatever. Uh, he lives in Japan, so he has stuff from hobby shops and conventions covered on that side, too. He's great to learn from. Wow. Well, I don't think anybody should try learning from me unless you want to learn from my mistakes. But uh, Low718, if you're watching, thanks, guy. So this has been an interesting year, 2017. It's now coming to a close today. Um, wow, yeah, so and as far as modeling goes, the only models I've actually completed this year was the Ravel Cyline Raider and the Devil Hunter Yoko. So I've got a lot of models that are almost completed, but... Um, We've had a bunch of setbacks. Um, it's been kind of busy during December. I've had house guests and uh, lots of snow. So a lot of uh, spray painting hasn't happened. Snow. I don't like snow. It's cold. It's wet. It gets everywhere. And snow is racist too because it's white. And, you know, everything that's white is racist, you know. Thank you, social justice, for teaching us these, these valuable lessons. So, um, 2017. Very, very interesting year. Um, so, yeah, okay, so I've, I've put together some notes to talk about 2017. It's been a very, very interesting year. Um, in no particular order. Um... It's very, very interesting. Okay, so I, the the previous video I, I uploaded was about why I've decided not to watch the new Star Wars movie. Book burning. I don't care if the books are somehow in the Millennium Falcon at the end of the movie or whatever. It's still the message is there. Burn down history. Let's let's forge a new future together and forsake the past and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, that is just cultural Marxism. And I, if I know a lot of people, they need to have that explained to them that they don't understand what that is. Do your homework. And it's just, you know, the, uh, the, the Soviets were into burning books Nazis were into burning books, um, uh, you know, hundreds of, you know, years of, uh, of, uh, uh, societal oppression, whether it's from, you know, is Islamic, uh, uh, taking over countries and destroying the, the, the history there, or, of course, whether it's like, you know, um, uh, through, uh, Vatican, or even, like, even the, the stupid Harry Potter books, you know, they're, they get these uptight, um, uh, parental groups that want to burn Harry Potter books and stuff, and, you know, I don't like Harry Potter, I think it's boring, um, I'd much rather read Lord of the Rings, but this, this, uh, you know, getting angry and burning stuff, we've seen enough of that this year, but in 2017, we've learned that the biggest threat 
to this world. It's not North Korea. It's it, it's it's not uh, um, anything like that at all. The biggest threat to this world are Jewish Nazis. Now let me name a few. Of course, um, there's Ben Shapiro. He is a total Nazi because he says stuff like, facts don't care about your feelings. Oh my gosh, that's exactly what Hitler would say. So there's Robert Spencer of Jihad Watch. He's, he's a Jewish man, and uh, he dedicates his life to exposing Islam. Oh my gosh, he must be Islamophobic. Oh my gosh. Never mind the fact that uh, uh, Islam is, is, is basically founded on killing Jews. Um, no, 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 he is the person who is wrong. He must be punished. There is Pam Geller, who is a colleague of Robert Spencer. She is also Jewish, and oh my gosh, she is Islamophobic. Oh my gosh, we need to shut her up as well. Oh my gosh, we need censorship right here, right now. Never mind the fact that President Obama has been recently, uh, uh, it's been found out he was uh, kind of helping out Hezbollah. Nope. No, no, no. Pam Geller. She's the wrong one. She is no good. There's Stephen Miller, who is a political advisor. He happens to know the difference between legal immigration and illegal immigration. Oh my gosh, that makes him a fascist. He must be stopped. There is David Horowitz. David Horowitz is the founder of the Horowitz Freedom Center. And as we all know, the word freedom, that's, that's uh, code speak for fascism. Because as you know, anybody who talks about freedom, they're fascist. And of course, the worst of all are gay Jewish Nazis. Alright, now here is uh, Milo Yiannopoulos. And uh, yeah, gay Jewish Nazi, oh my gosh. He must be stopped. So Milo's famous quote is, You shouldn't give a shit about skin color. You shouldn't give a shit about sexuality. You shouldn't give a shit about gender. You should be deeply suspicious of the people who do. Oh my gosh. That's exactly what Hitler would, said, would have said. And of course also there's Lucian Wintrich of uh, Gateway Pundit, another gay Jewish Nazi. Oh my gosh, these people need to be stopped. Okay, seriously. Yeah, uh, the social justice idiots in the year 2017 with Antifa, the, just the level of how stupid these people are is just crazy. And, uh, you know, burning down um, the UC Berkeley and all of the, the, the property damage, these people need to be classified as a terrorist organization. It's just disgusting. So, again, in no particular order, 2017. Um, yeah, so the, the, the big, big happiness that I had this year was that uh, TPP has been destroyed. And uh, this, this is something that it shouldn't matter where people are on, uh, in terms of politics. I think everybody should be completely um, uh, uh, against the destruction of a nation's laws and subjecting them to the whims of crony corporate lawyers. I've, for years I've been talking about TPP and mentioning it on this channel. And um, I'm glad that it is finally dead. That's really good. There's there's been some some uh, some setbacks, of course, this year. Some bad things have happened. Um, the the whole Las Vegas uh, massacre, the which, um, as I said before, it that is. Uh, 
that was spilled over from uh, what's been going on in Saudi Arabia. And um, it wasn't just some lone gunman either. Um, anyhow, I've talked about that before. Um, Geert Wilders and Marine Le Pen lost their their elections this year, but still, there's been a lot of really good things happening as well. Um, oh yeah, something else has been really strange is that ever since 2015, 77 holistic practitioners have been killed under very mysterious circumstances. Um, I've been following that news on uh, naturalnews.com. Very, very, very bizarre. Very alarming. Because, you know, I've, I've always uh, been a big supporter of uh, naturopathic medicine. And to see these people who have been speaking out against, like, um, the... They've been uh, warning about the dangers of vaccines and such, and then they end up getting killed in very mysterious ways. Um, kind of, I would say that kind of points to big pharma. I have no idea. I can't say for sure, but that's very, very peculiar. Um, yeah, 2017 is the year Hollywood is really getting their ass handed to them, and I love it. Um, like I said, I'm not, I'm not at all interested in seeing the new Star Wars movie. Um, I haven't gone to the movie theater at all this year. The only new movie I have seen this year, uh, was, uh, I rented, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I love that. And just yesterday, I watched Dunkirk. That was a cool movie. Christopher Nolan. Very, very good movie. Wow. That, I have to watch it again. Um... I was being distracted by my daughter because she was making noise and whatever. Um, but that was a really good movie. Um, so, <laughs> oh yeah, that's right, the whole Kate Steinle murder. Um, yeah, it's very, very f interesting to see leftists celebrating the death of a young woman because they hate the president. Because, you know, he's literally Hitler. Um... Just that, I. This they are mentally ill, and uh, people who are who are true liberals, I I would think that they should probably reject progressive ideals, because just progressivism is, it's just it's it's sick. I mean, for the past over a hundred years or so, what, uh, yeah, this year marked the one hundred year memorial of uh, the communist uprising in Russia and look at what progressivism has done to this world since then all the hundreds of millions of people who have been killed by communism it's sick do your homework the people who've been uh, been totally opposed to progressives are the ones who are being demonized for being fascist and those who were supporting fascists were the progressives um, I, there's an interesting book by, um, um, shoot, it, it's, I have that coming to me, um, Dinesh D'Souza, um, the book is called, I think, The Great Lie, I think, and it, uh, is talking about the, um, the, the whole thing about, uh, Nazi Germany, and he explains that, you know, National Socialism, they were leftists, and, uh, yeah, really uh, really bad but yeah 17 2017 Hollywood so uh, we've seen Star Wars go down the tube we've seen Star Trek continue to go down the tube again these are the people who just look up spirit cooking I mean I, I, I included some some photos of that stuff in that that Star Wars video I, I recently came out with um, th they're these people are just so depraved, so depraved. The who who would think of going to like you know these dinners where they just you know they they cut up these cakes that are shaped like people and it's like with this mock cannibalism and stuff. It's disgusting. And they, these people they 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 are like titillated by it somehow. It's disgusting. Um. Of course, there were the those bad. Uh, uh, hurricanes that hit America, really, really bad. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, the Google Manifesto. This again, progressives. Um, so this guy, he blew the whistle. He came out with this uh, document and explaining exactly why Google is completely um, intolerant of opposing viewpoints. And they prove his point by firing him at the same time. Um, I haven't checked on that guy, what he's up to recently, but... Um, yeah, the Google Manifesto. Remember that? That was over the summer. Bizarre. Um, this whole Me Too thing. I don't want to see people losing their jobs over mere accusations when there's no evidence. Now, in terms of... Um, that, that's uh, stupid... Uh, uh, Stuart Smalley guy... Um, shoot, what's his name? <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm drawing a blank. What the hell is that guy's name? Oh, Al Franken, that's his name, Al Franken, forgot about that. Yeah, so this guy is obviously caught in photos groping women, and this guy thinks it's funny. So, you know, that's different than just, you know, baseless accusations about, like, uh, uh, obviously fraudulent yearbook signings and all that kind of stuff with different inks and different handwritings and stuff and ruining people's careers over that. Um, other people... Um, I can th I can think of some, but it's just, it, yeah, I I don't I don't want to see people's uh, careers being destroyed for no reason, um, just for accusations. You know, let let the truth be known, let them actually come up with valid evidence and have them step down or whatever, or you know. But this whole Harvey Weinstein thing, for example, that guy's obviously guilty with all of those. Uh, recordings of him and, and the, the, the sexual uh, uh, crap that goes on. The thing is, is this, this Me Too thing, uh, as it, it's been mentioned, that it, it's going a little bit too far, and now people are getting kind of scared of women. And um, that stupid what's-her-name in the morning Joe, Mika Brzezinski, that, um, the daughter of the war criminal, um, was saying about how... Uh, some men would be uh, reluctant to hire women as a result of this whole Me Too thing. Because when it gets to the point where, oh, so and so asked me for my phone number, that constitutes as rape. That is extremely demeaning towards women who have actually gone through rape. And the women who've, who've uh, had their lives ruined because of that. And then people say, oh, well, that guy looked at me for too long. He was basically raping, with me, raping me with my eyes or whatever. That is just disgusting. It is so demeaning. And, you know, the, the whole thing about the whole transgender thing, that, that's also been a big thing in, in uh, this, this past year. I would think that if I were to strap on a dress and say that I'm a woman, and on somehow I I uh, can identify as a woman when I've never once experienced a menstrual cramp in my life. To me, that is degrading women. And especially when you see the behavior of these people who they behave in ways that they think are feminine when real women don't actually act that way, that is very disingenuous and very disrespectful towards actual women. Um, I don't care what uh, what kind of moral standpoint people may have. For me, that is just, it's, it's petty, it's disgusting, it's vulgar. Women are beautiful and should be respected for who they are. And for someone to demand that they be acknowledged for like, I'll put it this way. If you can't accept yourself for what you are, do not expect me to accept you for what you are not. 
So in 2017, we have seen the progressive, the regressive progressive lunatics. <clears throat> They've been heralding Islam as being a bastion of women's rights and freedoms, even going so far as to say that the so-called Prophet Muhammad, who raped women the very night that he murdered their 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 husbands, and uh, the same man who forced a six-year-old girl to marry him, and he had sex with her when she was only nine years old, that they go as far as to say that this man is a feminist. <laughs> Lol, what? So after the inauguration, the women's march was held, and women, uh, women who were not em at all embarrassed to completely humiliate themselves, uh, were all flown in, um, and especially at the at the, uh, the the funding of George Soros, or as I call him, George Sauron. So, this event introduced many of us to a disgusting Cretan named Linda Sarsour, whose family name literally means cockroach. I'm not making this up. She even admits this. So, now the face of a Muslim woman wearing a hijab made from an American flag has become the new symbol for feminists, despite the fact that actual real feminists in the Middle East are discarding those horrible rags as a form of protest. The people in the Middle East, the women who are being liberated in Syria, women who are protesting in Iran, they hate wearing those things and they're ripping them off as a symbol of defiance, whereas Western feminists are completely silent on this issue. I mean, seriously, you stupid assholes. Is this the image you progressives are rallying behind, thinking that this is the symbol of women's freedoms granted by Islam? Is this really the hill you choose to die upon? So, uh, meanwhile, recently, Linda Cockroach Sarsour has made statements defending Muslims' rights to kill Jews. This is referencing the Palestinian problem in Israel. This is completely ignoring the fact that Muslims have far more rights living in Israel than any Jew would have living in a Muslim country. Holy crap. Libtards are completely mentally ill. Something that's really interesting is, uh, like right now, people in Iran are wanting to be free from Islamic uh, 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 dictatorship. They're marching in the streets. They want freedom. I think that's a really good thing. So, yeah, make Iran great again. I mean, you look at Iran before the Shah was deposed and look at the freedoms that women had back then as opposed to now. It's just, it's stupid that they would uh, even consider someone like Linda Sarsour to, to try to promote women. Disgusting. Um, something else interesting is 2017 make Saudi Arabia great again very very interesting you know back in May I, I kind of made a joke about the whole glowing orb thing but um, ever since uh, the President Trump visited Saudi Arabia things have changed um, my friend who lives there he said that the anti-American rhetoric from the imams have been silenced Women are now allowed to drive. Uh, women are, are slowly being given more and more freedom. And uh, when there were some uh, fundamentalists uh, who wanted to, uh, they were threatening to burn women alive, uh, uh, King Solomon put an end to that. He you know, said, if anybody attacks a woman, you're going to be punished for it. Very, very good. Um, he said that the, the religious police are no longer allowed to make arrests. They can only make their um, their recommendations to the police, but they don't have the the right anymore to, to boss people around, and that's a really good thing. Um, the legal age for marriage, uh, they're they're uh, introducing a bill to make it 17 years old to end child marriage. 
So, lots of good stuff. Um, what else? The whole... Um, the whole crybaby generation. Yeah, it's... Uh, I don't know what to say anymore, I guess. But I'm just glad that I graduated college before all of this really got worse. Um, when I, I graduated in 1999, and of course there were some leftist professors, but nowadays where professors are actually assaulting people with bike locks and cracking their skulls open and such, disgusting. Very, very disgusting. Um, so, yeah, let me know what you've thought about this year. There's been a lot of good, there's been a lot of bad, um, but... Uh, it's been an interesting year, so Happy New Year, everybody, and uh, see you guys later. Bye.